Too far out, too far in. What's all this about reading the wave and positioning in the ocean? Where are the markers on the wall for knowing where to catch the wave? Don't you just have to paddle up to it, look forward, and you'll be able to catch the wave? Joking aside, training at the wave pool is amazing for your progression. You can get to your feet very quickly and start to think about riding waves in just a matter of months. However, it does shortcut all the key fundamentals of surfing in the ocean, such as building competency in the ocean surf, reading the waves, positioning, dealing with the lineup, and even getting out there. If you think you can just surf some waves in the pool and your progression crosses over immediately to the ocean, then you might want to think again. If you want to see how I got on during some winter trips to Morocco and what some golden nuggets from a leading surfer were, then this vlog is definitely for you. I'm James Davis, and I've been a skydiver for over 20 years, jumping and competing all around the world. In the last 18 months, I've been surfing at the wave pool in Bristol to see if wave pools can do for surfing what wind tunnels did for skydiving. I wanted to see what would happen if an average surfer trained at the wave pool for a year if they could learn to get barreled, sharing all the mistakes, learning points and experiences along the way. In the last vlog, I explained how I started making use of some cheap flights to Morocco and also found a fantastic surf guide and coach. There were many learning points from the trips over the winter. I think privately I thought I'd be working on turns and riding long point breaks, but with just within a few hours, I realized it would all be about just catching waves and building up the time in the water. That's all good with me, which is why I ditched the short board and pulled out the mid length. The thinking here is that the increased stability, the greater volume and better paddling capacity would help me spend more time in the water and get around the breaks better. So what were the important learning points which made the biggest differences to my surfing? Number one, trying to catch the wave at the peak. I could have started with talking about reading the wave, but knowing where to go is probably on par with this. If I'm gonna be brutally honest and risk sounding a little bit like a wimp, then the peak often looks like the most intense and powerful part of the wave. It's also where it tends to be most competitive if there is a busy lineup. It seems that many people, including myself, shy away from trying to catch waves at the peak and try to paddle into a wave a bit further down the line. But does this make any sense? To be honest, not really. If the wave doesn't have a steep enough face, then paddling alone isn't gonna help you catch it. Surfer clearly needs to be in the right place where the wave has a steep enough face and there's enough energy. All obvious stuff, but when you have low competency, it's not always that simple. By watching Snoopy paddle in, it was very clear that paddling was mainly for getting to the right spot, so we can use the push of the wave. Looking at Snoopy's technique, there is a clear shift in the upper body to make sure the board pitch changes, so we can use the push of the wave to help him catch it. Moving from an arch position to having the chest and chin closer to the board is a commonly used technique from lots of good surfers. I've seen this before with the slow-mo footage of Mark Phipps at the wave pool in Switzerland. I've had Pat Bevan explaining the importance of changing the upper body. And once you look for this technique, you'll see many good surfers using it. Now Snoopy had another golden nugget, which has been incredible. And this is to lengthen the stroke of your final paddles because it encourages you to lower your body position and change the pitch of the board. Super cool and very easy to remember. Yeah, longer paddles help you to, as soon as you put your arms all the way forward, it's helping you to paddle faster in the last minute. And then more you put your arms forward, automatically your upper body is going down, following you, and your chest following you as well. But you know exactly where you want to go. You design exactly way before that way is coming, what am I going to do in that maneuver? Because you, you are like ready for it in that situation. Another key benefit of going to the peak is that when there is a crowded lineup, which is very commonplace in famous or popular spots like Morocco, then you'll actually be able to have a better chance of catching the wave. My elementary experience was that if you aren't positioned correctly, then you won't stand the chance of catching a wave. 
Other surfers will just smell out weakness straight away, paddle past you and hassle you for waves. If you've waited your turn properly, find yourself well positioned, then it doesn't really matter what the other people are doing who are trying to test you or pressure you because it's less likely they'll be able to catch the wave because you're in the right place on the peak. The lineup is and was a massive learning curve for me. And having tried to surf anchors a few times with zero waves caught, I think being able to catch waves from the peak seems to be a critical skill to master. There are a ton of other valuable points that helped improve my pop-up, catch more waves, but I'll mention them in the next few vlogs because this video has already gone on far too long. In the next vlog, we will share some more waves and one massive game changer that helped my pop-up technique, which is so obvious in hindsight. It only took a good surfer like Snoopy to look at my surfing for a few minutes to suggest it. The value of proper information and knowledge couldn't be more obvious. It's always just about finding it, which is what this vlog is all about. Until next time, enjoy your surfing wherever you are.